The Wild Weird Podcast may include context that may cause extreme laughter. Listener discretion is advised. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, boy, you have a problem if that's the case. Coming to you live from a random garage in the ghetto of Vancouver. It's the Wild Weird. Hey guys, welcome to the Wild Weird with Greg and Solves. I'm here with my guest, Caesar Ramos. Right? That's your last Ramirez. Name? It's not Ramirez. It's Ramos. Is it Stamos? Enrique's. Is it Stamos? Might be. You kind of... Uh, you look His like ugly a, cousin, maybe. Is like, You're like Stamos of Down Syndrome. Yeah. And a few other things, but we're not going to mention them here. But, so, what I was telling you guys earlier about that story was... So you said you couldn't say it over. No, this isn't the, okay. this isn't the bar story. This one oh. is the Target story. Um, so, prior to the us recording this, I was telling them a story of what happened to me at Target or was about to tell them. So we stop uh me and Selena stop at Target yesterday. We need to get binkies for the baby because Willie always gets a hold of them, takes them out back and then rips them apart. So we we buy like a pack of binkies every two weeks. So I'm getting out of the car. The first thing I see coming out of the car is a fifty year old man <clears throat> with gigantic tits right in front of me as I'm Opening my door, leaving my car, lifts up his shirt and wipes his underman boob sweat right in front of me and made eye contact. I stopped. Fucking and gross. I stopped in pure shock, dude. Selena was right behind me. I looked back at Selena and I'm like, Do you see that shit? She's like, What? I'm like, This dude just stopped right in front of me. Didn't do it while he was walking. Like he couldn't do this and walk at the same time. So he stops, lifts up his shirt. And wipes the sweat from underneath both of his man tits. He liked you, buddy. It he was, was telling I, you. I, I was in pure shock. I was kind of tired. So I was like, it's just something that woke me up, caught my attention. And it was devastating. Like, I th- I've been, I think about it every couple hours. Every time I'm around it. Like, when you guys showed up, I thought of man tits. And it came to my mind. That's insulting. It's true, though. It's okay. I'm starting to get man tits. It's, okay, so like... How often do you guys eat fast food, like Taco Bell or drive through? Way bed? too often, unfortunately. Like if you had to say, like on a like a weekly or daily basis. I refuse to answer that question. That's why what, what I mean by way too often. Okay, well, what was the last? Where was the last fast food place you visited? I plead the fifth. Can I'm I guess, not going. If I guess it right, will you tell me? I'll confirm it if you guess it right. Because I I feel like I can predict based on your personality where you go. <laughs> Because mm-hmm. fast food places are are for convenience, but you're also going to go to places that are near where you live. So let's say you're deaf, you're Mexican, so I'm thinking you don't eat Taco Bell that much, right? You guys probably go to Muchas Gracias or Don Pedro's more frequently. Don Pedro's is really only when we're at work, right? But do you go to Don Pedro's more or Muchas Gracias more? Do you go to Taco Bell? Yeah, Taco Bell just gives me heartburn from hell. Okay, so Taco Bell is not a place you visit regularly. So let's say. Jack in the Box is probably the most oily, gross. They have the most options. Carl's Jr., there's not really one by your house. Right? The closest Carl's Jr. I can think of is either on Mill Plain or on 5, 503. Like by that Fred Myers. Only one I know of off the top of my head is all the way over by Fisher's Landing. Oh, yeah. There is that one, too. But that's pretty far away. But, like, there's no shame in admitting it. But, like, you, so you eat it too much. Yeah. So I've been, I used to not eat fast food at all. And then I was like, you know what? Burgerville's not bad. I can go to Burgerville, get like a veggie bean burger and get it stripped of everything basic. Did that for a while, but Burgerville's kind of expensive. And then I started going to Taco Bell because I was like, I can get me a bean burrito, right? I'm like, I'm not, I'm not super strict on the veganism. I eat a bean burrito if I'm hungry. Because like my time has been kind of restricted based on the like moving here. The new schedule, however, like with the time it takes Selena to get home from work. So my time is like if I I can't stop at a place and get food, go to Winco or a store and get something healthy. I'm like, I have I have no other option. Otherwise, I'm going to be hungry for the next four or five hours till lunchtime. Right. So, yeah. And if I don't eat, I get heartburn from hell, too. I've been eating more Taco Bell. Really? Strictly Taco Bell. Yeah. And I don't know how you do it. I'm getting my stomach is not doing well 
Yeah, it's the equivalent of a roto rooter, man. That stuff just goes right through you. Yeah, and there's like no nutrition to it. Where let's say if I ate like two bean burritos, you think that'd be enough calories to sustain you? But well, I mean, there's quite a bit of carbs in those wraps and tortillas. But it's like your body either like burns through it quickly or it just kind of like sits on it, so you feel bloated and gross, you know. And so like a couple of days ago, I got Taco Bell. Well, yesterday I got Taco Bell, and I ate that burrito. I ate two burritos, and I felt hungry in like two hours. Right. So no, the last I'm definitely getting fat and my man tits are growing strong and I I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to lay off. I'm eating a lot less a junk food than I was before uh prior to a few months ago. A well, lot less. What's what classifies as junk food for you? Anything that's like prepared, whether it's freezer meals, like uh T V dinners or chips or stuff TV like that. T V dinners? God, to I mean, me, yes, because I mean most of those are just loaded in carbs. Most of it's carbs. Well what T V D uh T V dinners are you going to? Like what is it? There's a lot of pasta dishes and like the hungry man with like the breaded everything. Oh, uh, like some, you, so what that's what I'm talking about. TV dinners. Do you put it in the oven or in the microwave? Microwave because it's faster. Yeah. Who the hell has time for to put it in the oven, man? Yeah, I don't think anybody puts a hungry TV man dinners, in the oven. TV dinners. If you're good, if you're gonna spend the time to put that shit in the oven, you have the time to cook a good meal. Yeah, yeah, you know? that's true. Because there's a there's a process to that. No, but I just haven't been cooking for a while. My dishwasher took a shit, and then I've got a roommate who's for the longest time was just pissing me off leaving. His fast food trash all over the kitchen. It's like, dude. Or using clean dishes and just sticking them in the sink. I'm like, dude, this needs to fucking stop. Yeah. So finally he has stopped. But no, yesterday morning was the last time I had fast food. It was a sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit from Jack in the Crack. From Jack in the I Box. knew it. I knew you were a Jack in the Box guy. I don't do McDonald's. That stuff's just terrible. It tastes so terrible. I can't do McDonald's. And the only other place that has breakfast near my house is Jack in the Box. Jack in the Box. I but can't. yeah, it was early in the morning. I think it was like... Well, not well early for me. So it was like nine in the morning. I was taking Ranger to the park when it was cooler. Yeah. And I just picked up a sausage, egg, and cheese biscuit and an orange juice. And from Jack well. in the Box? Yeah. So the Minute Maid little or simply orange, orange juice. I, I used to love Jack in the Box, dude. Like Jack in the Box had Carl's Jr. was my favorite. Right? Because they had those two for five deals. Dude, they're the only place that still has like a, a barbecue cheeseburger with onion rings on it yeah that was my i forgot what it was called but that was uh, my jam yeah i can't remember what it is but yeah that was my jam too no but uh last night my some friends and i got together uh we had a little bit of a dinner party i made some jalapeno popper burgers so it was uh a lean beef blend um two th- really thin patties i think the entire thing be- uh it was like an eighth of a pound per uh, and then a mixture of a little bit of cream cheese and some smoked Tillamook cheddar inside. Put the other patty on top, seal it, and then sear it real fast. On some Kaiser rolls with some uh, garlic aioli. Made a red onion jam. So you take red onions, you sweat them, you soften them up. Then I hit them with blackberry wine and balsamic vinegar, salt, mm. pepper. Cooked them down until they were nice and soft and they had cooked all the excess liquid out. A little bit of butter in there uh, just to make them so much more unctuous. Yeah. Put that on top and then um, spring green mix, like spring greens, like baby radicchio or whatever it's called, baby spinach, arugula, stuff like that. And that was it. Oh, and uh, no, quickly pickled jalapenos. Sliced them up, threw them in a glass container with some uh, white wine vinegar, little tiny pinch of brown sugar, uh, and some salt. See, you can make a very, very good healthy meal. Like, you put so much effort into a burger. You'd have no problem losing weight based on like preparing yeah. your food. Yeah, and it was a lot of protein, fair amount of veggies, and we each only ate one. Yeah, that was filling. But then we also had dessert. My friend's girlfriend made a uh, a peach galette. It's kind of like a rustic pie. Okay. Um, man, it was so good. Seriously, it was so good. I think I've had pie since Thanksgiving. Yeah, no, it, it was like fresh peaches, like they had just been picked Monday. They were perfectly ripe. A little bit of uh, vanilla, a little bit of sugar, brown sugar in there. I also hit a, put a dash of bourbon in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it tastes so good. And then um, vanilla uh, gelato on top. A little scoop of vanilla gelato on top of that small piece of pie, man. That You're just... a fancy bitch, man. You're fancy. <sighs> You're more fancy than I can imagine. Apply the to fanciness to yourself. You love fancy with everything that's not you. Yeah. Apply it to yourself. You'd be a smooth motherfucker if you made yourself fancy. 
Uh, treat yourself like you treated that burger. You put a lot of extra love and care into that burger. Put that care into yourself and fuck the Why burger. Why do you think I bought myself a bottle of real nice whiskey? That's not taking care of yourself. It's treating yourself. It's not taking care of yourself. Taking care of myself? Mm-hmm. No. You ever watch Parks and Recreation? Not a lot of it. You remember Bits when Aziz, I forgot what her name was, but they had like, it periodically brought, got brought up when it, like they had the treat yourself day. When they go get manicures and pedicures. And like just a day where they did whatever they wanted just to treat themselves. And then before they do it, they're like, treat yourself. You got to treat yourself, man. I did treat myself. You got to take care. Yeah, you did. I also went to my, I, hmm, I also went to my bar, my buddy's barber shop, got a haircut the other day. We could, I was supposed to go last night because he was doing this thing. I just fell asleep. I'm a, I'm a terrible friend. So he was doing, he was trying to break a record. Most haircuts in 24 hours. So from 1030 Friday it's morning. such a waste of money. So it's like cutting a tiny bit of hair and then coming back to get a little no, bit No, no, like full haircuts. Full haircuts. But what, are, and how many haircuts do you get in one, one I day? I don't know. I don't, I didn't ask him. Because uh, it was from Friday morning at 1030 till Saturday morning, 1030, 24 hours straight. Like, it's like everyone show up. Obviously, they're paying for it. And I think he. Oh, so he's giving the most haircuts. Yeah. I thought you said getting the most haircuts. Oh, no, not sorry. Given. Yeah. Well. He's the barber. He's cutting the most. Yeah, hair. when well, I thought Semantics. like you say like he was cutting a tiny bit of his hair and then go to another place and get a oh, tiny bit of a cut. Bullsh- well, that'd be kind of hilarious. It would be, but it'd be pointless. How terrible would that haircut come out? If it turned out normal, it would be a miracle. Oh yeah, exactly. It could either come out really cool or really fucking terrible. Most I feel like likely it, terrible. I feel like it would turn out as like a mullet. You know, some form of a mullet, like a Theo Vaughn mullet. Right. But no, uh, but no, I should have gone. That would but I fell asleep. I was tired. I know, man. This is one of those weekends where I thought I was going to get a lot done. Like, I had a basketball game yesterday, and I couldn't even go because my ankle's been so bad. Like, the last two weeks in a row, I messed up my ankle. Like, the two weeks ago, I rolled my ankle. Like, literally had, like, a sprain. Like, mm-hmm. rolled it, landed on it wrong. Then waited a week, played last week, and went up for a layup, just planting my foot down. Ankle gave out on me, right? I was like, Jesus. I, like, I can't even jump without it giving out i thought it was gonna get better and it's been not getting better speaking of basketball have you been um what are you doing dude anyways uh speaking of basketball did were you watching the team usa games in the olympics i did i did like i thought because i i I commented right at the beginning like i think during the exhibition games and i their first game and i thought they were not gonna get the gold I was one of those people that was second guessing and thinking that they were going to suck their way, but they pulled it out. I, I'm pretty sure they were sandbagging at the beginning. You think? But they yeah. also didn't have a couple guys because Devin, like uh, Chris Middleton, Devin Booker, and I think one other person wasn't there yet. Like they oh, okay. just arrived. They didn't play. They didn't play in the first game. They were probably under, still under quarantine. Yeah, there was some pro. Cause, and the, the, uh, two of the guys were in the NBA finals. Mm. Right, so like they they had to be quarantined and they didn't get there as early as everybody to practice because they, of that. They pro- the, honestly, they probably realized those first games weren't really worth anything. Yeah, and ironically, and they, they played against the team uh, in the gold medal round that they lost to in the first mm-hmm. game. I saw right? that. So I thought like, oh, this. I started I started watching the highlight of, highlight of that game, and at the beginning, I was like, oh, it's going to be more of the same. France is going to he's going to stomp them, dude. I give up. What was it? Second quarter, they just brought it out. Yeah. I, I don't know. You, I mean, there are you know obviously foreign basketball, like international basketball, has evolved and gotten better. Like the United States has always thought of itself as a dream team, ever since yeah. the dream team, right? It ever- may have originated, but honestly, let's face it: a lot of these European countries, they take their basketball almost more seriously than we do. Well, and that's a different style of basketball. Like Damian Lillard even said, he's like some of the rules in the NBA are set up to help them kind of score easier. Right, it's more difficult in European style basketball because there are slight different rules. There are uh, free throw line rules, things like slight little things that you want to that if you tried to play with the rules you understand, it would throw you off a little bit. Right, there'd be calls, but yeah, I was surprised. Like I, I wasn't surprised they won because I most people thought because you are the, from the country, the pinnacle of the best players in the world. The birthplace of basketball. The birthplace yeah. of basketball. And we just always had a history of being good. We haven't lost a game. Uh, I think it was like in 24 games, like mm-hmm. t- going back to like 2004. So it's like 
you expect them to be great. It's just like the uh, women's Olympic basketball. Like they're the most decorated basketball team, I think, because they haven't lost it since like is it the eighties? I don't know. Like they've lost. They bear like they've just kept winning. They they've always been good. But you got teams like like men's basketball. You got teams like Australia that getting better. They have Patty Mills, uh, uh, Della. Vid- I forgot his first name, but Della Vid- uh Doba. He used to play for Cleveland when LeBron was there. Um, they got Joel Ingles plays for Utah and like the, each country's getting better players. Like their basketball is just evolving, becoming more net, like internationally known. And the rest of the world is finally caught up. Hell football's spreading too. I know in Mexico, it's starting to become, to become yeah. fairly big. I think it sucks about football though, when it comes to international sports and international like games, like the Olympics, mm-hmm. it's like, you need a lot of people for each team. Right. So mm-hmm. you're like, if you're an inter, if you're in argentina and you're trying to put together a team, a, a team you're like you're how, get how steamrolled yeah you're gonna get steamrolled how many people can you get that are good to form like what what's the average amount of players on a football team like it could be 50 damn 80 i don't know i'm damned if i know because you got special some of the guys are people. yeah some of those guys are only playing in very serious like special circumstances and they don't even play most games yeah and they're just sitting on the sidelines but like they got offense, defense, special teams. Um, so it's like, you know, you need a lot of people. And it doesn't make sense to, like, you're not going to get a lot of countries formulating a team and expect exactly. them to be but basketball. competitive. Basketball, you can do it. Theoretically, you need what? Your starting five can be really good. Like, yeah, you know, and you need maybe 15 dudes yeah. for reliefs. But reliefs. I think if you're like Australia, you're starting five, probably four out of five of them are in the NBA, and the other guys might be playing in Europe, you know, or in China. Right, uh, because they have some pretty good like leagues there. Former M- NBA players go to China, play there, or go to Europe. Right, um, Luca Luca Doncic plays for Dallas Mavericks. Like the guy's been a professional basketball player since he was a teenager, and he's won the European Championship uh, when he was 16 years old. Damn! When he came to the NBA, this guy's a veteran in European basketball, and he just turned 20 at the time. Like he was 19, I think, when he came to the NBA. Damn! So it's like this guy is still in his early 20s, and he's still got, if he stays healthy. 15, 15, 10 to 15 more years of his career left minimum. Yeah. You know, LeBron's big ass has been playing for almost 20 years. And that's because at, when he came to the NBA, he was able to come out of high school. You can't do that anymore. Yeah. You uh, gotta do what? Two years of college. Yeah. But that's that. I don't know if that'll change because now with the, like the new rules, uh, be able to make money off your likenesses in college sports, mm-hmm. you know, like there are players that are already signed to deals like female, like imagine being a female volleyball player. Like, if you're a beautiful volleyball player and you got a good following on Instagram, like, you're going to get a, a deal. Like, they're going to thrive. Of, uh, volleyball, didn't women's volleyball win gold? Yeah. You okay. know, it's one thing I kind of, like, forgot about because I'd never watch female volleyball during the Olympics. Right. And I was thinking, like, oh, this can be, like, indoor volleyball, right, where you got a variety of sizes. But beach volleyball, you just too, they're all tall. No, I was talking about indoor volleyball. Oh, I didn't uh, watch beach, indoor volleyball. I don't know about beach volleyball. Beach volleyball, no, I just saw, big. I saw uh, the highlight. No, what I've been wa- uh, following were the shotgun sports, like the shooting sports, specifically shotgun. What channels were those on? Because I know like... I was watching the the replays on uh, on YouTube on NBC. Okay. And uh, no, dude, like, let's see, trap, gold went. Um, men and women's went to the U.S. Skeet, I believe one of them went gold, the other went silver or bronze. I can't remember what it was, but no, men's trap. So if you want to know the difference, Skeet. Sorry, no, so Skeet is where we won two golds. Trap is where we didn't. But Skeet is um, two uh, clay pigeons going either direction. You have two shots. Trap, it goes out in a kind of an arc. The machine is turning. And when you tell them to pull, whatever angle it's, well, direction it's pointing, it launches it at that angle and you have to pick it up. I tried that once here at the Vancouver Trap Club. Damn. Really hard? I got humbled. Yeah, this is a lot the, of timing, I feel, right? Muscle memory, timing, understanding what your your load is doing. Cause it's not like a circle, you know, like a flat disc. Oh, it's not No, you no, it's a it's a column oh. about seven, eight feet long. So you're basically sweeping that column into where the clay is going to be, whether it's going straight out or across. Across is easier for me. Crossway shot. So that's a like a like a reactionary sport. Like if you yeah, have reflex, it's like it's reflex. It's like baseball. You're on the surface. 
no one should be able to hit those fastballs, but yet they do. Yeah, they, because because yeah, they catch a glimpse of what the pitcher is doing, and they just react to it. Yeah, they react like they never the movement, actually the, the body language. Yeah, they never and, like, see they the do ball. it so much. It's pure muscle memory. Like exactly, they, they're not even thinking when it goes. They're just like they they know what to do and they just respond. Yeah, and trap and uh, and skeet are exactly like that. What would you skeet, say was like the most interesting Olympic event that you watched this time, like this year? Some of those uh, powerlifting events. I did watch a couple of those. Were cool. um, Philippines got their first medal. A gold medal in women's, um, what was it, like fifty six or sixty five kilo category? Uh huh. Sh- that chick. It's probably was small then. Well, right? that yeah, the really tiny women. That chick clean and jerked more than you and I combined, like three hundred and some odd pounds. Oh, this obviously great technique. Like yeah, being that great small, technique. you have to have great technique. And then the the heaviest men's category, the guy lifted, uh, um, snatched like. 561 pounds in kilos oh, equivalent. Shit. Yeah, 561 up over his head. And uh, all three judges were like, it's a it's a clean snatch. And yeah, I'm like, damn, how do you do that? First of all, and second of all, and probably more importantly, how the hell do your knees survive that? Yeah. I mean, the guy was like braced like a mother trucker on his knees. Well, it's just repetitive motion. Yeah. They've, they've been doing that for like, most of the, like yeah. most of their adult life or teen life, you know. Yeah, the guy from Georgia, and then I think it was the semifinals bout of the super heavyweight class, uh, Team USA. I can't, I can't remember the guy's name, uh, Fernandez or something like that. But no, just watching him fight because the Olympic style boxing is a little bit different than yeah. Your dude, your... I didn't know this, but there's a guy. His name is something Torres. I think Richard Torres, and he was like in the super heavyweight. I think that's who it was, Torres. Right. That guy is from my hometown where I was born. Really? Right, Tulare, California. He went to, uh, I think, Tulare Western or Union. One. There's like two high schools that are big there. Uh, went to the same high school as like I think my cousin, and like, so like on social media, I noticed a lot of my cousins. Uh, uh, I think especially my cousin Kathleen. Shout out to Kathleen. Um, like we're just rooting this guy on. I think he ended up getting the silver. Like he was, he was, in the, yeah. he lost the gold medal he, match. Yep, he he won. The semifinals got sent up to the finals, but he lost. So he got silver. But yeah, like the dude is like the pride of the town, man. Right. Like everybody in the town was like rooting for him. That's got to be cool. Yeah. To be, to get to that point, man, the dedication is it's not like the, the prize fighting you see on HBO. Like well, you the know, WBC, BC I wonder, championships. I have like most, let's say like, I don't know if Canelo, Canelo Alvarez ever fought in the Olympics. I don't know if Manny Pacquiao did, but like you don't see those names in it because there's no money. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And it's a completely different style. That's Are you going to risk for the your sport. record for the sake of the Olympics? That, not only that, but it's it's the Olympic boxing is purely for the sport. Yeah. Not the money. And like I was going to say, um, and it's a completely sty- different style. It's a tournament style. So you, you, you get like, out. not just that, but you get maybe a day between bouts. Yeah. Like you, you like, could like all be on the, the brink British of guy, like- the, the British uh, super heavyweight. Uh, he lost a TKO. Ref had the fight to stop because both his eyebrows popped open. The first one, his left one had been popped open the day before in another fight. Uh-huh. They sealed it up. That popped open, but they got it closed. And then his right eyebrow popped open. The The ref was like, uh, no, done. Well, what was the... Who who did he fight? Torres fight in the gold medal round. Oh. Was it Great Britain? No. It was um, one of the stands. It was part of the fo- former USSR. Not Georgia. Sl- Slovenia? No. Uzbekistan? I'm gonna name I all think, the stands. It might have been Uz- <sighs> Kazakhstan. I don't know. Twenty minutes later. Uzbekistan. So I guess you're right the first time. Jalalov. Torres Jr. got second. Clark, the British guy, got bronze. He's the one that got TKO. Yeah. The ref had to fight to stop. Man, that guy was doing pretty good too. Oh, and then watching some of the flyweights. Man, those guys are fast. Yeah. Completely different style of boxing. But yeah, I don't know, dude. Like, it was a cool Olympics. I never really been into the Olympics that much. Me either. Well, back when it was in Australia, I remember watching it a lot in school. Like, they would set it up sometimes. But, um, no, uh, speaking of hometown heroes, men's shot putt. The gold medal winner from Boring, Oregon. For real? I can't remember his name. They would be. But that guy was lobbing that sucker like Something like 83 meters or something like that. 
Jesus. I feel like like a guy that represents some form of lumberjackness would like win that sport. Makes sense. I get well, that. The other the other American competitor was a huge dude. And the uh the one that won was smaller than him, but it was all technique, man. Yeah. You could see the bigger dude just trying to muscle it out, and the smaller dude was just using the technique to get that spin and just whoop out there. Yep. No, dude, like it was cool. Like just seeing people from countries that normally you don't see, like on the main stage, pull it off. And that that was impressive. And it sucks that it's over, because I mean that's been good entertainment for the last couple of weeks. Right. I was going to say... Um, well, it lasted three weeks? Two or three weeks, something like that. Yeah, the marathon was last. Obviously, Kenya won that one. Oh, dude. Like, okay. they never lose that. When, when I'd watched long distance running, and you see a Kenyan, and then... I don't, know, I don't think you saw a lot of... Eth- God, it's fucking fly. You don't see, like, a lot of Ethiopians. But I was like... I definitely knew, like... It was like two Kenyans were, like, racing against each other for the first and second spot. I think that was, like, a couple days ago. And uh, I was like, last, yeah, not last night or today, this morning, because yeah. it's the marathon is always the last event. Yeah. So and it takes what? Four hours or well, sub four? No, whatever. But usually around four hours, a little over. Dang. But yeah, no, uh, there Dude, was just watch it. Can you imagine there... running for that long? And they don't even look phased. They look tired. They're drenching themselves with water. They're squirting in their mouth and their face and everything. But like they and they keep going and they're and actually all... running fast. Yeah, and all those fuckers are so skinny. You're like, how do they have the energy? They reserve? definitely eat a lot. You got to think like they're that. carb loading like a son of a gun. Yeah, like just because they're skinny, but they're they're exerting so much energy. Right. Um, what was I gonna say? No, I can't remember who I was listening to, but there was a marathon runner back in the day from Kenya. Guy ran barefoot. Yeah, he would run barefoot, and then Adidas sponsored him, and he liked running barefoot, so he ended up carrying the shoes. As he was running. <laughs> God, I can't remember who that was. That's fucking cool, though. Right? He's like, I'll, I'll carry them as I run. Right? It's gonna, I run it's better gonna, barefoot. It's going to bog me down, and I'll get second place. How but... freaking badass do you have to be to run a marathon barefoot and win? Well, yeah, how often do you think this guy ran barefoot? Right? You know, that's a, that's probably what he's the most efficient in, is running barefoot. If I run barefoot, I'm going to be dead for a week. I'm going to be able to walk. <laughs> Shit, right? But, I don't know. It, it was cool. It was cool to watch. I mean... I'm, Really Swimming. though, there wasn't like much of anything else on TV. Like right? I, no, it was. Well, it's a, this time it was. It's been five years since the last one. But no, uh, and the U.S. like cleaned house in swimming mostly. Women's water polo won. I think what we did okay in gymnastics and in diving, but I, I don't. Well, think diving's we part of the swimming. Yeah, diving, swimming, uh, races, um, the shooting. We were we started strong, but then just got started getting smoked by China. Especially in the air rifle categories uh-huh. and pistol categories. Yeah, we just started getting smoked. <clears throat> and, uh, oh, men's trap, bronze winner. Guy from, like, I want to say Kuwait or Oman. Um, Arman, I don't think I've heard of that country. Oman. 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 It's on the Arabian Peninsula, if I remember correctly. Oh. Uh, small nation state. Yeah. But, uh... The guy that was his seventh Olympic Games. Well, I feel like you can probably do that sport till you're like in your sixties. Yeah, honestly, in that if you sport, if you keep like fresh, in that sport it, you have to have amazing body mechanics. Let me ask you, and what would be a sport that you wish you could see in the Olympics? It's not there. NASCAR. I'm joking. No. Um, or Formula One. That could be a thing. I see that could happen. Right. Not but unless you're... you put all the drivers in the same exact vehicle. Yeah. But I mean, that's watchable. Like, if they made it happen, it, it, it wouldn't sound absurd. I'm trying to think. Honestly? Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. No, like, think of, like, all no, those like, sports. You... Yeah. Air, uh, what do you call it? It's speed kind of ball? pretentious, but yeah. Speedball, man. No, those guys, if you ever watch a cornhole, match. If Cornhole ever became the Olympics, I'm not. I'm no, when cornhole. we had the shutdown, I remember being in the break room. ESPN was on and they had the cornhole championship. Yeah, wasn't it like right at, like, right? towards, like, the middle of COVID? Yeah. Was cornhole was on everything? It was the summer. No, it was, like, a couple months after COVID started. Yeah, it was the summer the, following. After the, lockdown. They're like, this is what people are going to do. This is all they can do is barbecue at their house and play cornhole. Yeah, because so. everyone was masked up. It's not a um you're socially distant kind of as you're yeah. playing it and you're it's not a um what do you call it an aerobic ex, ex obviously uh, it's not aerobic exercise so you're not so but no but no paintball is 
Well, especially with yeah, your fours like and your mids. Yeah, but you can be a fat piece of shit and be great at cornhole. Right? But no, if you ever watched one of those paintball matches, especially in the championships, dude, like the other day I watched the highlight. One of the the uh, backers, one of the people in the back that just basically post up and suppress, you see him when they break out. He breaks out, slides into cover, and pops up like, like, catches his foot into the ground and pops up standing up firing. I'm not going to lie. I I, like, Damn. That's- paintball is cool. I would rather see laser tag. Like, laser tag in the Olympics would be fucking cool. Why? Why does a laser tag on television exist? Because it's got, like, it's like, you can Because play- everyone who grows up playing laser tag plays paintball. That is true. But, like, all you need is, like, a DJ, like, playing music, some, like, Daft Punk in the background. It's all, like, Tron-themed, bright neon lights. And you'll see a bunch of dudes just, like, coming around corners. Actually, one that would uh, be really good, Ninja Warrior. In the Olympics, why does something like some, an obstacle like an course. obstacle course kind of physical exactly because that would test everything. I bet you they're pushing for it. Someone is because people watch it. That's that would popular. be great because yeah, that's a syndication. I think so. People well, but watch I'm not it talking regularly. about that, but I'm talking about like obstacle courses in general. Yeah, because you could because it's upper body, lower body, balance, dexterity, uh, your vo- like acceleration, like velocity. You're like launching. Yourself. Why don't we throw in dog races into like or dog sports? Like you got those kennel clubs and like different events. Because the dogs would be the prize winners, not the people. That's true. But at like, least with horses, you're right. So like, them. if you were an American, could you claim a German Shepherd as like? Does it have to be an American breed dog competing? You know, the Germans get the German Shepherds. Like the Chow but if there Chows. were races, do you know what dog would always be used? What a Greyhound. Is that an American dog? I don't know. But they're bred specifically to run. Yeah. They're very lean, very fragile dogs. But horse racing? Run. Nothing with horses? I don't think horse racing, but there's certain equestrian events. In the Olympics? Okay. Yeah. I was going to say that. I've never watched any, but that would make sense. You know, I was talking to someone, the pentathlon, I think. There's a bunch of stuff that's in it. But one of the events is horse racing. Well, they can't, unlike other equestrian, equestrian events, they can't take their own horse. You know, I just thought of something. Hmm? It's kind of like out of the blue. But... What like it, would you be surprised if they made an Olympic event for like each country to test who had like the most potent sperm? Like it's like a masturbation thing where like everybody's just jerking oh, it into a cup and they do like a DNA or ancestry test. Wait, what? And like they find no, out what to, to... which one of you are the which race is the most reproductively like good. It has <laughs> first of all that stinks too much of eugenics. <laughs> yeah. Second of all. The best way to do that it's really is, racist. It is never a happen, uh, but... sperm motility count. Yeah. Like who has like and you get like a team of five people, so it's not like just that one individual has great sperm and everybody else sucks. You just try to find somebody who had like a group of people that could like provide the best American sperm, the best Chinese sperm, the best like like Russian sperm. Oh guarantee, god, this I this guarantee show... you the Scandinavians would win. I feel oh. like the Swedish would win that who's got the best sperm. One? Is probably with me on this. No, really, there are Mexico beautiful... would win. Yeah. How are we rating the best? Are we gonna go like the most futile, like the most, like the the best? I don't know. Like, what what would you classify as that? They'd be the hardest working sperm. They'd be the first there. They'd be like the Mexican sperm got to the egg but first. See how easily we reproduce in general. That's what I'm saying. Mexico would win that I one. Know. I would say like the skin, the, like the. Oh man, dude, this show went off the fucking rails, man. Yeah, I don't give a shit. But like, the like the stories you hear from people that go to Sweden and Norway, and they're like, you can walk down the street, and somebody's working at a newspaper stand, and they would be a model in the United States, and they're just an average everyday person there. Like, all the men are gigantic, Chris Hemsworth, Thor-looking motherfuckers, and then like all the women are just tall, beautiful blonde women. Like my wife's side of the family. They're all like that. They're all beautiful blonde women. And all the boys are beautiful blonde boys. Right? There's a reason why my kids look the way they do, and it's not because of me. They, that's obvious. You know what I mean? Like, they might look slightly like me, and you could be like, oh, that's it. That, those are his kids. But they have the blonde hair. They have the, like, Scandinavian features. They're probably going to be taller than me, especially Lee. Lee's already starting to get tall. Gene's a big boy. So I'm like, I would say sweet. The Swedens probably win that. And then Russia follows a close second. And then the I would I say I don't even remember the original question. But anyways. Like what would win like the sper- like the best sperm of the world kind of thing? Are you or would it be like a random country like Are you talking about 
quality, like, well, like... There's a lot of factors. Genetic quality or, like, which... Who has the best sperm, period. Like, well, motility, well, who has the most chances of getting someone pregnant. Well, yeah, well, let's say it had to be multiple factors, right? It had to be, like, sperm count. Uh, Dude, that'd sperm be Mexico. Density, Again, that'd be Mexico. The color of the sperm, right? The gloopiness and the quantity, right? There's got to be, like, multiple factors along with this. They can't just be... Sounds a, like you really want to be a judge. I... I would actually mind. I like want to watch right, it. Hey, hey, hey! But I want to mind. Are you, you going to add taste to the profile? I bet you hey, are. I got to do what's got to be done. That might be it. that if that's a category. Which one? Ta- we'll have a bunch of like we'll have a woman from each country or man, or trans man, women, whatever. Whoever decides they want to do it, test it out, and be like, which one tastes the most? To be like, Americans definitely going to taste like diabetes and like health problems, right? Americans going to taste like fat. It tastes like vegetable oil or canola oil. China is going to taste, or Korea is going to taste like kimchi mixed with like a little bit of like spice and herbs i don't know there's got to be like hawaiian or islanders it's gonna taste very tropical they're probably gonna have the best tasting sperm hey different subject i already finished my first whiskey get cracking homie i will i'm on i'm on i'm on a roll here with this but i would say probably yeah that, that's i would watch that it's definitely offensive and it shouldn't exist but i would watch it if it did or how how would we like how would you rate well I guess a spelling bee is how you rate the smartest children right like not really like you never see like a young white kid winning that shit right it's always Asian or Middle Eastern because they know how to spell and they work harder but like I don't know what what would you say would be like a sport you'd like to see in the Olympics? cancel culture better not listen to this no nothing like nothing is just a comp like turned into a competition that you'd like to watch like Pokemon Go should that be in the Olympics. No. 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 Because no. I, I saw speed walking. I can't believe speed walking is a thing. But that, that have you it. tried speed walking over distance? It looks like you I dislocate a hip in the process. Exactly. It's a lot of technique. Don't get me wrong. It's just awkward to watch. Yeah, because you you have to bring it right up to the edge of running without running. Like I think a speed walking is like an elderly thing. Like it's like something you do when you're old because you can't, your body can't do much else. Right. But then you're seeing a bunch of twenty year old speed walk, and it doesn't seem natural. No, but again, it's just, it's, yeah, that technique, man. Or World of Warcraft. Like, video games, will that ever become no. an Olympic thing? No, because Like, the Olympics, Call of Duty might not be in the The Olympics? Olympics is about physical prowess. Yes, but that does... And remember what happened when they added eSports? eSports to the X Games? I didn't ever watch on the X Games. I know they have, like, their own... No, they... but did you hear what happened? So, they would get the exact same prizes and prize money... As all these people who were winning uh, X Games and skateboarding, BMXing and stuff, and like those people are like and sacrificing guys, their bodies. Yeah, stack of, like dr- their drive to become the best, and yeah, no one was happy. People started not show go not competing in the X Games. Well, who wants to sit around and watch people play video games? Like, do you guys remember? Actually, what, there's a lot of people who do. There's a it's lot of insane pe- to me. Like, do you guys remember when you were younger playing video games? You didn't want to be the guy sitting behind everybody playing. Like, if you kept losing. And you're like stuck watching them play video games. It was miserable. Exactly. You were waiting for the next guy to die and you had next. Yeah. All someone's alarms going off. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, you're just waiting for who's next. But you're anxious. Like you were just waiting for your turn. Exactly. Like I I can't imagine sitting in an arena <laughs> watching right. a bunch of people play video games on a big screen. That sounds horrible exactly. like I've, if i would sit there and be like this is where i've gotten with my life now if they did endurance what like made them walk on a treadmill and play call of duty at the well, same not time? like that or trying to play see who could play the longest like have them standing up seeing who could play, go 24 36 48 hours without with that, with drinks because these guys are probably chugging red bulls like probably but at the same time it's like if you take go take a leak your time pauses yeah You'd have to be able to sleep, though. No, no. That's they, the thing. That's part of the I don't endurance. think that would be the challenging for these kids. You don't think they've done it? You don't think that's what I'm saying? Standing. Do they get drug tested? Probably. Yeah. No coke. Yeah. No uppers. Mm. You know what? Scratch. You'd button. have to. You'd have to make the stakes high, man. Like if you're gonna ha- if you're gonna make video games watchable for me. So I'm saying, if they want to add compete in video games in something like the X Games or the Olympics, that's how you do it. Make it actually physical, physically difficult to do. Yeah. Because otherwise, it's. But if you you can say that like playing video games, there is reflexes involved, twitch reaction. Uh, there's a lot of mental 
challenges mm -hmm. going there on is. during it, right? There so is. I mean, there's not but a lot. Of, you're, you could sit there and not be. And should there be like gaming competitions? Yeah, because it does take a lot of skill. Should it be compared to like some of these sports, physical sports? Like, should it be added to like the X Games or the Olympics? Hell no. Yeah, whoever's listening, send comments and give us your opinion on that because this generation probably views that differently than we do because we're a little older. But not like, much. not much. I mean, I just, I'm just, I like to play video games. I'm just not in it to like, I'm not trying to build a successful Twitch channel. Right. You know, and kudos to them. But I, I don't know. I just don't find it entertaining to watch exactly. other people play video games because I, mean, I hated it as a kid. To be completely honest, I don't really find it entertaining to watch like basketball or football or any, or no, baseball or soccer, that. you know? Yeah. It's, it's not it's my all, It's a team. varied opinion. Yeah. But I also do respect the fact that those, activities take a lot of dedication a lot of time uh, a lot of uh, God, was week last week's was so much better a lot of it's sacrifice it's pushing through when days you don't want to practice you don't want to try well that's called comp that's called competitiveness well, not right com where your drive to discipline win. exactly competitiveness discipline your, your your ability to push yourself to the limit and sometimes beyond because it does happen yeah like, you got to be able to go out there even though your baby mama is cheating on you and taking all your money. Oh, you got to be able to perform. I just, another one that should be added to the Olympics. What? Maybe this my this is my adopted redneckness. Hot dog eating contest. Oh, <laughs> that'd be hilarious. I'd but watch no. Bull riding. Yeah. Because you know those motherfuckers. I would, th I would say the Spanish would win. Or the Brazilians, dude. Brazilians are, uh, are have been for a while with Guillermo Marchi. We're just dominating, but no. Recently, they start uh, the PBR started this uh, ter well, not series, but this like yearly tournament. It's by teams in uh, aggregate team scores. Uh, I think the last one I watched it was the U.S. had two teams actually: Canada, Brazil, Mexico, yeah, and Australia. Yeah, you know those crazy Aussie all the bastards. wild countries. Yeah, there's a desert somewhere. I'm surprised Argentina hasn't, but maybe there's some. I thought there was some Argentinian bull. They riders. are, but I don't think there was enough to field the team. See, that's the thing. Like, don't bull riders already have a short career? Like, they don't like their late twenties is considered a long career for them. Yeah, but mind you, these guys are starting in their teens in the yeah. in the amateur circuit. So, do you think like if you're gonna start it as an it's Olympic kind of sport, like being you a have linebacker. to have young people in it? Yeah, it's kind of like being a linebacker career. in the NFL. It's not the longest career path. Yeah. It, it takes a toll on your body. And it's ve a very dangerous. I think the biggest reason it probably would never be an Olympic sport is because it's so daggone dangerous. Yeah. But also, it's like you just have to have the – I think they're, they're willing to make anything an Olympic sport if they have the fan base to watch it and the people willing to – and they have I enough do, people do it. Dude, there's it. five countries. And yeah. give it time to spread because I wouldn't be surprised if there were some Brits doing it. Because they've seen it on TV and they go, huh, well, you're, the, they're halfway down a fifth, fifth of uh, scotch going, that seems like a, well, that was son. That seems like a good idea, mate. Well, yeah. Well, it's definitely regional, right? I mean, if you're going to look at like the cultures that are great at it and are more relevant in that sport, it's definitely regional. Australia right? makes sense, right? Oh, yeah. Those crazy You got to have a little bit. The Swedish, I could see them do it. They do some crazy shit. The Scottish definitely would, uh, if England fielded a team, it be mostly scotsmen but that's what they probably ride bulls they just probably do it drunk exactly you know what i mean i'm sure every other country does it too that's probably drunk. where it started i there's, can't remember there's a nobody quote. soberly hops on a bull and try and wraps them around its nuts and tries to ride it it started well, off as you, a drunk sport exactly i can't remember i was watching some show some one of the characters was like um i don't know uh what i'd do if i met the first person who decided it was a good idea to ride a bull and his buddy goes i'd kind of like to meet the first guy it's the second guy I'm worried about. Right. The second guy is like, oh, I'll try it. Right. That went so well for my buddy. I'm getting on that thing. No, but, and again, some of those bowls, man, they're multi-million dollar bowls. Because in like the PBR circuit, those bowls, like the better they are, they actually have a uh, a season long ranking at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. The bowls owners win a millions in prize money. Damn. Or something like that. A lot in So, like, money. it's like you have to end up as the best. Like, you, the, being the best is beneficial. You're going to make more money. Yeah. But if you're not winning anything, it exactly. becomes a hobby. You're exactly. not making any money. Some people do it for the sheer love of it. 
which I don't know how they would love getting the shit stomped out of them. It's but cultural, it, man. You yeah, know, like just, if they grew up with it, it's part of their life. And they're good at it. Like even the worst PBR writer is still really good compared to every all the other circ- like amateur and semi-pro circuits that oh, are yeah. out there. Like, I don't know, like I'd watch it. Not gonna lie, I would watch it. I'd watch Boy. it occasionally. It's awesome. Just I think it's probably the out of all the things we just brought up, minus like the jerk off Olympics. Like it's probably the most realistic to happen, right? Because they're 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 strongmen and they're gymnasts at the same time. Yeah, because that 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 they probably had the most CTE out of everybody too. CTE, like the brain trauma, like they probably TBI, hit. traumatic brain injury. Well, you like CTE is what like UFC fighters get from getting hit in the head so much. What's it stand for? I don't know. No, because TBI is traumatic brain. You ever heard of like CTE? It. No, I never had. I figured you were uh, mixing it, getting it mixed, getting it mixed up. Cranial temperament, something I don't know. I really don't know what CTE means, but that's what but like no, UFC there's, fighters there's get. a lot of a lot of football players got CTE. Yeah, yeah they're um, well, the rules have changed. The safety equipment has changed. Actually, a lot of bull riders are now wearing helmets, and they're Watch required. Look that up. What does CTE mean? But like, but uh, no, they're uh, they're required to wear those uh, like um almost like akin to a judo crash vest, but I think they're ribbed and padded to help displace some of the impact. Yeah. Uh, so they don't get their uh, ribs kicked in, but a lot of them are wearing helmets. Not everyone. Cause for the longest time when they started saying, Hey, you can wear helmets. A lot of them were like, you know what I love to pussies. see? That reminds me. It's Nowadays, like, a lot of the younger guys are like, have you ever seen I want to live uh, past 40. Have you seen the movie Hidalgo? Hidalgo? Yes. Why not do that? That'd be epic. With, like, sky views of fucking people racing horses across the desert? Like, does that still exist? Like, long-distance race horses? A little bit. But the thing is, most most of these countries are so uh, heavily populated that why you does can't this do that t- without running. Okay. Why across- doesn't that show exist? Like, there's naked and afraid, right? People are willing to watch people, like, in a fucking tunic and, like, covering their dick up with, a t- like, a, like, a small cloth, naked in the woods. But nobody would watch, like, a show where it's, like, you have a horse and you're racing. It's, like... I think it's like why the, it's like the gumball. My bad. It's like the gumball. Motherfucker, that was ten dollars worth of whiskey right there. Yeah. Well, party foul. It, it was a party foul. Finish that. But yeah. Uh. But when he, why? Why doesn't that exist? Maybe that does. Because it's just not on American television. Here's why. People love. Uh, well. They'd get mad because. Um, They'd be putting down a lot of horses because a lot of horses would be getting injured in those because it's a lot of cross country and long distance. Would PETA get involved? That'd be a PETA thing. Yeah, and that's the issue. They would be like, "Oh, you're mistreating the horses." To extent, to an extent, you probably would because you'd be riding those horses like a rented mule, man. You'd be pushing them, yeah, pushing them over long periods of time without rest. And honestly, a lot of those horses would have to be put down afterwards because they'd be so wrecked. I wonder if there's a way of doing it safely though. Slower speeds. Well, it'd be a long race, right? It'd be like... And that's why they're pushing them over a long period of time. Without rest, without care. But that's like a real thing. They've done that before. They have. A long time ago. But in those times, they actually... They carried some food. And uh, they would have to forage for the rest of their food. So they actually had to stop. The horse would get to rest while they were foraging for their for their dinner. Yeah. So that's... But now being competitive, they'd probably have like protein gel or and protein bars and energy gel and all, all their caloric and protein needs it as they could eat while they were riding yeah just to get that edge and then the horse would not get that's again it's the horse is the limitation there now if they did endurance motorcycle or endurance motocross dude like well they do actually like the baja there's a motocross class the baja 1000 oh for real yeah is that on television or like uh, a, one, there's probably gonna be a YouTube video probably. Like somewhere. Well, the thing is, because of how long it is, but I want to see struggle. Like I, this, it's gotta be dramatic. Like there's gotta be some like like operatic music in the background while a man is trekking through the desert because he's walking with his horse. Like it could be very operatic and theatrical. Well, the thing is, you'd have to be taking camera crews and or cameras that'd be editing weight. Have a like a sky view of like a drone, like doing that whole Goodness. watch. No, have you ever watched the Iditarod? No, I've, what is that? Sled dogs. Sled dog racing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Something yeah. like 700 miles or something like that. Those guys, it's a little bit different because those guys... But they've televised being, that before. Yeah, um, they have, and it's very difficult. And really, the only place you can do that is near the checkpoints. Yeah. 
when they stop in like the like the villages and this like the towns and stuff. Yeah, at the checkpoints, they're taking care of their dogs, and then taking care of themselves, and maybe catching a cat nap. Can you imagine having that gig, being that reporter who's like has to sit in the snow and like negative degree temperatures? Dude, that's like, wild. With a mic, just like I'm waiting for them to show uh, up. There is a guy who now competes. He's a former Navy SEAL. Uh, again, I can't remember his name, but he's uh, he Dude, runs. I, this is what I wish I had chopsticks. So I can like test out trying to catch a fly with these chopsticks. That, Dude, that fly is driving me crazy. Get one of those electric fly swatters, man. You'll get rid of those flies. Don't next, no, next time we have a podcast, I'm gonna get. I have chopsticks in my kitchen. I'm just gonna grab chopsticks, and if I see a fly, I'm gonna Mr. Miyagi that shit and fucking catch it out of the sky. You can't do it. I bet you a hundred dollars you can't. If you do it and catch it on that camera without editing, I will give you a hundred dollars. Make it five. No, no. I'm too broke for that shit. Okay, I'll do that. I think I can. I say you give me enough tries, I can do it. Actually, no. I'll get you a really nice bottle of whiskey. Hundred bucks. Hundred bucks. Okay, that way you can choose your whiskey. No, oh, I can just I, I can use buy, it for other stuff. I'll buy a shit ton of Thai food and like Korean barbecue. Right. But but no, I think I, I I don't know. I mean, obviously, I don't know anybody who's done it. But give me enough tries. Eventually, I'll get lucky enough. There'll be one I abnormally mean, slow. What what? There's this theory that if you get enough chimpanzees. In a room on typewriters, them banging away. Eventually, randomly, they will they will end up typing up the entire uh, written works of William Shakespeare. It's a possibility. It's a possibility. It's algorithmically possible. Exactly. Mathematically possible. However, likely, definitely not. Yeah. I don't know. I think you'd be more likely to spear one with a chopstick than catch it between two chopsticks. I think I can do it. I think if I was focused enough. And I had the, and I trained, and I did it at least a thousand times. Give me a thousand times. I think I can get it once, or at least hit it with the chopstick. Nope, you have to catch it between two. Like I think there's a possibility of that happening. I could definitely like knock it with the chopstick, the tip of the chopstick. I'm gonna try that. We're good. Twenty bucks if you now, because unless you that's, have gonna, a, that's gonna be like a segment unless, on the podcast now. I was like, gonna I, say, if I see a fly, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna like one hand me the chopsticks. No, because if the only way like to wooded actually, chopsticks. Like those cheap ones you get at like whichever Safeway. one, whichever ones you want. Because I got metal ones that are sleek as hell and they make noise if you move fast, like they whistle. I was gonna say I was gonna offer twenty bucks if you manage to hit one, but unless we have a slow mo camera catching it, you will, we won't be able to tell whether or not you really did. So never. But if you catch one between two chopsticks on camera, I will give you a hundred bucks. Okay. I see. This people, is recorded. People on YouTube have probably done it before. If you type in watching people catch flies with chopsticks People, probably it's with happen. a lot of editing well I, I know there's a lot they've done it in movies obviously so there's a lot of editing but i feel like that's possible right? right there's gonna be one abnormally slow and dumb fly with like a fucked up wing that can't really escape or react as fast who knows it's got like one less fly chromosome or something like i don't know no, but what was uh but no back to the iditarod those guys are tough their dogs are just phenomenal i totally forgot about that right God, I missed that movie Snow Dogs. I gotta watch that. The Cuba Gooding Jr. No, nope. oh god, that was so campy. <laughs> it wasn't but, really campy, but that was like peak Cuba, right? Eh, no, that was on his downhill slide. Oh no! Because let's peak. face it, the only way you're doing a movie like that is if you can't get another I can't job. Believe, I can't believe I just said like peak Cuba Gooding Jr. with Snow Dogs. I would probably say it was. Was he in Boys in the Hood? He was in Boys in the Hood, and like a long time before that, probably. Ah, uh, Man of Honor, Radio. That was a big one. Yes, no dogs was like the end of it. What right. is he up to now? Is he in jail? Probably. Who knows? <clears throat> but no, what was it? Oh, oh was that, as I was trying to say, there's this uh, former Navy SEAL that was having a really tough time adjusting to life. He was trying to find his niche in the world. And somehow he got linked up with sled dog racing. And That's how he had tried to find his link? Well, no, that's that's where he found his jam. Like the, I feel like he could have bonded with dogs because the dogs were probably the biggest. Not just in that, that but the you're pushing your body as you're taking care of these dogs. And these that dogs makes are sense taking... because like it's so physically and mentally challenging mm -hmm. that it's like the one thing that probably got out got him out of his mind because he had to focus on that. Yeah, Frozen Trident Kennels is where he's out of in Alaska. Is that what the company's called? Frozen Trident. Kennels? Yeah, because the yeah, That's cause, so cool. It's a good name. Cause, yeah, because the 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 the. Eagle with the trident. They're the seal little uh, emblem. So, being a former Navy SEAL, so frozen trident. That's pretty yeah, cool, like, man. But yeah, I saw they, uh, Black Raffle Coffee was doing this uh, segment on him. And some of the the clips you see of him, I mean, his 
beard and mustache are just icicles. Yeah. Off. I feel like you'd have to have a beard. It's a necessity in those circumstances. Right? Protect your face. Oh, the, I don't know. Like, still, if there was one sport, well, they have ping pong, right? Foosball. They, they definitely do foosball in the Olympics. I could see that. That's a lot of skill. There is and a, a certain amount of athleticism. I was listening to a podcast, and there's a female comedian. I think her name was Kelsey Cook. I think that's her name. And her parents are both in the Foosball Hall of Fame. Right, you. It's like they have a tournament annually in Vegas. Right. Of course, it would be in Vegas. And if you get rid of the bullshit, like the stupid spinning shit, yeah, or the rules. or the sliding back and forth really fast. Well, they have doubles, so you can do like, which is funny because like I forgot, what, I think she was on Giannis Papas' podcast, but she was like, they have female doubles, male doubles, which doesn't make any sense because you're like, why does it need to be a gender separate sport? But everything is i guess reach strength i don't know reflexes it's, maybe maybe but like or they just did that to like because they wanted to women have more i have better uh fine motor control yeah but like so they have that like but like a rule even when i was growing up playing foosball i used to play foosball all the time like you can't spin that's a you don't spin that's a rule yeah right? that's that's bullshit man that spinning thing it's like yeah screw no, you you got to be able to have that wrist action to be able but to no you I have more control paintball and bull riding yeah I say they're probably. Who would you say is the first, like the next, like the? What do you think they'll introduce in two thousand, like twenty four? I don't know. Yeah, because they're probably there's only gonna be a three year gap between it, right? Because like, yeah, because this one was five be, years. Yeah, Olympics. Was supposed well, to be it depends year. on how uh, COVID gets. By then, we'll probably have a like an Omega variant. Yeah, or we're just all dead. Hopefully not. Right. But we'll yeah, probably have nuked each other by then. I hope fine. not. But I mean, I look forward to the next Olympics. It'll be cool. But also, I don't think I'm in three years. I might not even care. We might be dealing with some more serious shit. But, Collapsed economy, etc. But anyways, but yeah, dude. You know, I really appreciate. It. I feel like I just ranted so much that I forgot to even like drink on that. But we have time after this. Yeah. And um, but I appreciate you coming on. Like I know you weren't really even thinking you were going to be on, right? This Mark, was under you're going to be on eventually. Make time. Make I can't time. wait to see you and your dad. Seriously, you'll have to go through and put subtitles on. I was surprised that he actually wants to do it. Like uh, that He, he wants to, to support his son in something he's doing. Yeah, that's a first. He's proud of you. He might not say he's proud of you, but he's proud of you that you're trying something. Yeah, that'd be cool. We'll see. But like, I, I just don't know how it's going to go. Because I mean, there is that language. Like my dad speaks English, but you know, there's an accent. Again, if you go into a bit of Portuguese... Or if he does, you sub, just subtitle everything. No, just go I through think it'll be great. I'm kind of excited because I don't think I've ever sat down like sat down with him long enough to have a with conversation. having that long of a conversation. And uh, since my uncle is coming up, I want to do it with him, my uncle, my cousin, and my brother. Dude, right? That would be crazy. Maybe individuals, and then as a group. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. It's gonna take so much time individually, especially if they're gonna be here for a week. But, one, but no, individually, quick half-hour segments. Yeah. And then as a group, and just knock it out of the park. Yeah, you guys, uh, follow us on Instagram. Um, all social medias, we're on every streaming platform. YouTube, uh, We're on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, um, Anchor, anywhere you can find us. Um, we actually are going to be releasing merch soon. That's going to be announced in the following weeks, the next couple weeks. Um, so you'll, you'll hear more about that, but, um, yeah, you know, hit us up, uh, leave some comments. Remember to hit the bell button. So you are notified whenever new podcasts and new videos are released. Um, and yeah, we appreciate you guys listening and following us. Uh, it's been fucking cool and we're going to keep doing it.